loving pranams at the lotus feet of our most beloved Lord Bhagwan Sri Satyasai Baba Vadu. It is indeed a great blessing to welcome all the participants to this divine satsang on Vedas, the very foundation of Indian culture and spirituality, which is being organized by Sri Satyasai Samyukta Suti Shreni of Sri Satyasai Seva Organization, India. In this 43rd episode of Gama Agama lecture series, we are indeed very fortunate to have with us the well known Vedic scholar, Professor Dr. Sudarsana Sarmagaru, again with us to continue his lecture series on Rudra Dhyaya. Now, I humbly request Professor Sarmagaru to take over. Sai Ram. Om Sri Guru Bhjo Namaha. My humble pranams at the lotus feet of Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba. My sincere thanks to the organizers of Satya Sai Sanyukta Shruti Shreni and greetings to all the fellow Sai devotees. Friends, today we are going to discuss about the fifth Anuvaka of Rudra Jaya, which runs as follows. Om Sri Gurubhyo Ramaha Hari Om Namo Bhavaya Cha Rudraya Cha Namas Sarvaya Cha Pashupataya Cha Namo Nilagrivaya Cha Sitikanthaya Cha Namakka Pardine Cha Vyukta Kesaya Cha Namasahasrakshaya Cha Satadhanvane Cha Namo Girishaya Cha Shipi Vishtaya Cha Namo Mishustamaya Cha Shumate Cha Namo Hraswaya Cha Vamanaya Cha Namo Brahate Cha Varashiya Se Cha Namo Rudhaya Cha Samvardhane Cha Namo Agriyaya Cha Prathamaya Cha Namo Ashave Cha Jiraya Cha Namo Shigriyaya Cha Shibhyaya Cha Namo Urmyaya Cha Vasvanyaya Cha Namo Srotasyaya Cha Dvipyaya Cha This Anuvaka contains 15 mantras. Each mantra starts with Namo, the word Namo, and end with Cha. That's why these mantras are named as Nama Adi mantras. This setup, this, this type of method, this setup system, 
will continue till the penultimate anvaaka of rudradhyaya drape andhasaspate friends now let, let us discuss uh, about the mantras and their meaning namo bhavaya cha rudraya cha this is one mantra there are two words bhava and rudra bhava means the source from which the entire creation emerges out is called bhava or the source which prevails everywhere in the creation is also called bhava from whom the entire creation emerges out and who pervades the entire creation in vedanta shastra this concept is called upadana karana upadana karana the reason of creation so bhava is the creator o bhava o the creator i salute you namo bhavaya cha and he he lives in the entire creation there is no place where he doesn't live bhavati sarvatra iti bhavah he stays he is the being in the entire creation be bhava to be he is there namo bhavaya cha namo rudraya cha this word rudra has been already interpreted several times back uh this has got two concepts rodayati iti rudraha one who makes us weep cry one who causes sorrow pain agony he is called rudra that is one aspect of the deity the other aspect is rud dukha karanam tadravayati iti rudraha root means the cause of difficulty pain sorrow sadness or any other bad result unwanted result he removes all the causes when who removes the causes of pain sorrow difficulty agony all these things is called rudra o rudra i salute you you are capable of making us laugh and making us cry we salute you namo bhavaya cha rudraya cha and the second mantra is namo sarvaya cha pashupataye cha sarva shrunati hinasti sarvamiti sarva when who can control by causing pain is called sarva or who dissolves everything is also called sarva who can punish anybody is also called sarva so many meanings are hidden in this word sarva nama sarvaya cha in whom the whole creation gets dissolved shrunati shrunati means gets something dissolved sarva everything is called sarva nama sarvaya cha that's why he is called layadhipati he is the control of the mahapralaya there are three states srishti sthiti laya and 
He is the presiding deity of Laya. Laya means Pralaya. Dissolution. Namasharvaya cha Pashupata ye cha O Pashupati I salute you. Pashupati means Pashupati, we all know that Pashu is the, the four-legged quadrupeds. The cattle, like the cows, buffaloes, etc., horses, and so on, pashus. And pati means the master. The master of cattle, pashupati. Thus we understand. But actually, there is much more to learn about this world. So many hidden dimensions are there. In this word, Pashupati. Pashu means Pashe na badhyate iti Pashuhu. The animal which is tied down by ropes is called Pashu. Pati means the master or protector or controller. So, Pashupata Yecha he is the master of all the cattle. This is the meaning generally observed by all of us. But the commentators of this passage have given some more dimensions. Pashupata Ye Pashu, who is tied by the ropes. Even the human beings can be called by the word Pashu. We are also Pashus. Pashyate iti Pashuhu Pashyate iti Pashuhu Drakshyate iti Pashuhu Athava Pashena Bajjate iti Pashuhu That which is seen is called Pashu. We are also seen by the Others, so we are Pashus. And Drakshyate iti Pashuhu, we are seeing everything. That's why we are called Pashus. Importantly, we are also tied down like the animals, like the buffaloes and the cows. We are also tied down by the worldly bondages, worldly desires. So, all the human beings are also called Pashus, Patayecha. He is our master. He is the master of all the human beings. He is not just the master of the cattle, but he is the master of human beings. Pashupata Yecha. O Rudra, you are the Pashupati. Pashupati can do anything. He can tie down or he can release the knot of the rope and gets you free. How and when? The answer is in your hands. If you do any karma aiming at some desire, I should have money, I should have progeny, let me have lands, houses, property, vehicles. You may pray him and get whatever you want. All these are desires. If you pray him with desires, he will tie you down by granting those desires to you. Suppose you pray him without any desire, just requesting him 
for moksha then he will release every every rope every pasha he will make you free from the worldly disease then set you free for moksha orudra you are capable of tying me down and releasing me from the worldly bondages that's why i salute you o rudra uttering the name of yours pashupati <clears throat> namah sarvaya cha pashupataye cha this pashupati needs to be interpreted further more we know of pashupatastra we have a reference of pashupatastra in mahabharata there was a king of sindhu desha his name was uh, kshatra vrdha he has a son by name jayadratha whom we also call as saindhava because he was the king of sindhu desha so he was instrumental in the illegal killing of abhimanyu and arjuna took a pledge to behead him to cut off his head before the sunset at that time he was covered by the armed forces of kauravas just to protect him till sunset then krishna using his disk covered the sun the people thought that it, the sun uh, sunset happened and jayadratha or saindhava came out then immediately with an arrow arjuna has beheaded him. then krishna says now you use the pashupatastra which you have earned by appeasing rudra with your sincere penance at the time of vanavasa so arjuna used that pashupatastra this pashupatastra took the head straight into the hands of vrudhakshatra who unknowingly put it down vrudhakshatra gave a boon to his son whoever puts your 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 head down will also die immediately vrudhakshatra also died because of the boon which he has given himself so pashupati he wants to release the bondage when this arrow was shot the head was cut if it falls down then the cause will be arjuna and his head also will fall down. this is the bondage pashupati rudra has promised by him wanted to release him from this bondage of boom that's why the pashupatastra through pashupatastra the pashupati took the head of saindhava or jayadratha straight into the hands of his father who has given the boom and made it put down through him only and killing him and killed him 
Pashu Pata Yecha. See, the release of the bondage will be ultimate, not just to some level, to some extent. The release will be a comprehensive, entire release of bondages can be done by Rudra. Namasharvaya cha pasupataye cha. That is the second mantra. The third mantra is Namo Nila Grivaya cha shitikanthaya cha. Nila Griva. Nila means black. Griva means the throat. The deity which partially black ended. Throat. It is not originally black. It was made black by consumption of the poison. That famous story need not be repeated. When the churning of the ocean, the milk ocean took place, first the poison came out and uh, nobody was ready to consume the poison. Rudra came forward. That shows his capacity. He knows that he can consume the poison and digest it. He came from, and here is another aspect. He is very kind to his devotees. He wanted to save the devotees. This episode reveals that Rudra is ready even to consume poison for the sake of his devotees. Nilagrivayacha. So that was stopped here. The poison was stopped here. As a result, part of his throat became black. Shitikantha Ayacha from, uh, from this mantra till three, four mantras, the contrast of the qualities is shown. Shitikantha Ayacha on one side, on one way, he is Nelakantha, black throated. Deity. On the other side, he is Shiti Kantha Ayacha. Shiti Kantha. Shiti means white. White throated deity. Why he is white throated? He is covered by the ashes, Bhasma, Vibhuti. That's why his, his throat is white. Actually, Rudra is transparent. Rudra is colorless. Sphati kamane ni bha. Sphati kamane ni bham. Parvati shanna mami. Sphati kamane ni bham. Sphati ka, the gem sphati ka, the stone sphati ka has no color. Similarly, Rudra's body is also is also transparent without any color. If you apply ashes, it is white. If you apply poison, it is black. You can apply any color. That's why all the colors are there in Rudra. The colors are the representatives of various planets. Like uh, Ravi, Soma, Mangala, Buddha, Guru, Shukra, Shani, Rahu, Ketu. These are colors. All the colors are there in, in Spatika. Spatika means Rudra. When you perform Rudra Abhisheka, then uh, you can please all the planets, all the Grahas, Graha Shanti. 
the mahanyasa purvaka rudrabhishekha will give you relief from all the difficulties that are caused by the uh, hostile movement of uh, the planets the fourth mantra is namakka pardine chavyukta keshaya cha in this mantra also we can see the contrast of what is hey kapardin namaha kapardi means kapardosya jata juta kapardosya jata juta is curly hair is tied down it is lock that lock is called kaparda one who possesses kaparda is called kapardi namah kapardine cha o kapardi o dt with long hairs tied down on the head i salute namah kapardine cha this also gives some other hidden meanings the jata juta are the hairs of shiva these are the sorrows or the anger or the other uh, negative forces all the hates are the negative forces you may remember at the time of daksha yajna when uh, rudra was not invited he got angry but his wife sati devi he attended the yaga where she was disgraced humiliated because of which she bound herself committing a suicide on hearing this on learning this rudra became angry and removed one of his hairs and threw it on the earth on the floor where from the virabhadra rose and destroyed all the uh, enemies of shiva those who do not want to worship him. so that's why all the keshas they are the bondages they are the uh, they are the feelings or emotions of negative forces he has tied them he has locked them actually the hair knot is called a lock there is a famous uh, drama in english literature rape of the lock rape of the lock written by alexander pope so kapardi means the locked dt the dt who possesses locks so he controls all the evil feelings nor negative feelings that's why he keeps them tight down tight yukta keshaya cha yukta kesha means one who has the who has the head transfused all the hairs are removed on one hand he has a long curly hair tied down on the other hand he he is hairless he, his head is bald no hairs on it so he has no bondages he is free
when he opts to be a being of the world then he needs to he needs some help uh, to beautify his head his face and to adorn it with the, the moon and other things or the crown or a beautiful lock of the head when he doesn't want to be with the world then his head becomes bald vyukta keshaya cha the head with shoven or tonsured heads yukta keshaya cha both are there and dattatreya uh durvasa and uh, bhagavan shankara is incarnations they appear with a tonsured head like shankara yukta keshaya cha these are the contrast qualities kapardine cha yukta keshaya cha the next mantra the fifth one is namas sahasrakshaya cha shatadhanvane cha sahasraksha sahasra means thousand this is only a, 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 a symbol thousand is only a symbol not just thousand there are innumerable eyes to him namas sahasraksha akshins the eyes so there is nothing that is that it is invisible to him everything is visible to namas sahasraksha cha shata dhanvane cha shata dhanvane cha 100 bowed deity the deity who has 100 bows bow is a weapon so in uh, puranas we read that at the time of tripurasura samhara he used veda all the four vedas as his uh, uh, bow or the omkara his bow omkara was his bow so he has innumerable bows innumerable weapons shatadhanvane cha so everything which causes you difficulty or pain or agony is the bow of rudra he wants to punish you somebody may curse you then you will feel bad your emotions are hurt there the person who abused you is the bow of rudra somebody may deceive you of your property then the cheater is the bow of rudra shata dhanvane cha o rudra you have innumerable bows weapons in your hand so i salute you to be kind towards me don't punish me don't use your weapons against me i salute you the sixth and the seventh mantras if they are studied together we can get a total meaning they are interlinked namo नमो गि दिशा चिपी विष्टा च नमो मे जुष्टमा चेषु मते चमो गिरीशा चिरीशा मीन्स रुद्र 
one who stays on giri 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 means the hill the mountain he stays on kailas giri so he is girisha shipivishta means shipivist shipi uh, vishnu shipivishta veda says shipivishta is one of the names of vishnu urdra you are girisha you are the shiva who live on the kailasa giri kailasa parvata urdra you also are shipivishta the vishnu namo meedhushtamaya meedhushtama meedhushtama means the creator brahma he creates the worlds so namo girishaya cha shipivishtaya cha namo meedhushtamaya so rudra brahma vishnu rudra all the trinity trimurtis have come here they are nothing but the rudra beat shiva beat vishnu beat brahma it is only rudra and not only that he is above all the three he is above the trinity of brahma vishnu shiva how how it is known what is the proof the next part of the mantra is ishu mateja ishu means the arrow he is girisha i mean he is uh, shiva he is sipivishta he is vishnu and he is meedhushtama he is brahma and further he is ishuman the deity possessing the arrow arrow can be shot towards any object so he can he can shoot arrows even towards brahma vishnu or shiva because he is above them he controls them he is the just the paramatma ishu mateja here ishu is the the power that cannot be encountered by anybody even by the trinity namo girishaya cha shipivishtaya cha namo me idhushtamaya cha ishumate cha urdra you are brahma you are the vishnu you are the shiva and you are the controlling deity of the three deities the supreme deity the supreme soul above the trinity namo girishaya cha shipi vishtaya cha namo me drishtamaya cha shumate cha the eighth mantra is namo ohraswaya cha va manaya cha o hraswa i salute you o vamana also i salute you namo hraswaya cha hraswa means anything short hraswa uh, in the vowels hraswa means a dirgha means a 
is the short version or Dirga means the long version Hraswayacha you are in the form of a Hraswa or short short formed DT O Rudra I salute you who are in the who is in the form of a short and Vamana Yacha Vamana means uh, we get confused Vamana also gives the same meaning short Vamana Vamana Avatar so, so what is the meaning uh, what is the difference between uh, uh, Hraswa and Vamana both are short. Why there should be two different names to him? It is a best. See, no single letter of Veda is a best. Every letter or part of the letter is also significant, relevant. Perhaps we may not know the actual meaning and the gurus, they will help us at this complicated situations. Namo Hraswa Ayacha, Vamana Ayacha, short and short. Hraswa means Sukshma Sharirinaha who have all the organs work organs or the sense organs all the organs are there but they are minute very little in, in its in their form miniatures like lilliputs we uh, some we call them lilliputs they have all the organs but very small in size he is called Hraswaha Vamana one of the organs is normal others are small that is the difference between the words uh, Hraswa and Vamana even in Vamana Avatara his head was normal His legs and hands, all the other other parts of the body were small. Namo Hrasvayacha, Vamanayacha. In serpents, there are invisible serpents. And there are big serpents like pythons. And the, some have hood, some do not have. And that hood is okay. The other part is not proportionately bigger. Even in birds we see some have very long nose. They are called Vamanas. And Rudra is ever perfect. He is everywhere. In all the bodies. The ninth mantra is Namo Brahate Cha Varshi Yase Cha Namo Brahate Cha You are Brahat, you are Varshiyas. I salute you, Rudra. Brahat means Desha Kala Vastu Vyavacheda Rahitaha. You cannot confine his body to a particular region or to a particular time or to a particular shape. That's why he is called Brahat. You cannot define, you cannot confine him to a country. He is everywhere. You, may, you cannot make him confined to a particular type. 
he is always there you cannot make him confined to a particular shape he is there in every shape uh, just now we discuss hraswa vamana he is also ta- uh, tall he is also long he is also very big bruhate cha this uh, location time or shape cannot bind him he is above all the all the bondages so he is called brahat o rudra you are brahat brahate tubhyan namaha aisa hi hai namo brahate cha varshiye se cha varshiya varshiya means showering deity he showers yeah rudra he showers the water because ganga flows through his head that is the general meaning but varshiye se cha if you worship him he will shower the desires on you he will grant all the desires required by you varshiye se cha like a shower he can shower his blessings on you he can shower blessings on you he can grant any desires so he is called varshiyas urdra you are capable of granting any desire to me that's why i salute you namo brahate cha varshiyase cha the next and 10th mantra is namo vruddhaya cha samvruddhane cha namo vruddhaya cha vruddha vruddha means the aged person senior citizen that is the general meaning vruddha yashreshtha svruddha actually vruddha means who is shreshtha who is the super who is at the top level is called vruddha being at the top level can be through age can be through wisdom or any other aspect therefore uh, we call some people as jnana vruddhas dattatreya dakshinamurti swami they are jnana vruddhas vruddha shishya guru yuva still the aged persons approach him though he is young aged persons approach him rishis approach him to study something to learn something because he is gnana vruddha he is not vruddha aged by uh, by by the time of birth and age namo vruddhaya cha vruddha means the shreshtha the best the best so namo vruddhaya cha samvruddhane cha samvruddhana means who is worshipped by all right from the animals they also worship rudra let alone the human beings even the serpents they worship rudra samvruddhane cha samvruddhana means the deity who is worshiped and served by each and every one namo vruddhaya cha samvruddhane cha 
O Rudra, I salute you. The eleventh mantra is Mamo Agriya Cha Prathama Cha Agriya Prathama. O Agriya, I salute you. O Prathama, I offer my pranams to you. Agriya means Agre Bhavaha Agriya. Agra means the top. Who is that at the top? And Prathama means who is the first? First is always at the top. One who is at the top is always first. What is the difference? Rishis, they have interpreted. Their drishti, their sight is very sharp. They can catch the difference. And they are very kind to us. They gave us it in writings. So we can read and understand. Namo Agriyayacha. Agriya means Hiranyagarbhasabhavartata Agre Bhutasya Adapatireka Asik. The first creatures. Who was it? It is Hiranyagarbha. Sahasra Sirisha Purusha Sahasra Aksha Sahasra Path. The innumerable headed, the innumerable eyed, the innumerable footed God, Sahasra Sirisha Purusha Sahasra Aksha Sahasra Path. That Hiranyagarbha was the first creature. Hiranyagarbhasama vartata agri Ataha agriyayacha That Hiranyagarbha is none other than our Rudra. O Rudra, you were the first creature in the form of Hiranyagarbha. I salute. Namo agriyayacha then Prathamayacha. Now we, we discussed that Hiranyagarbha was the first creature. He was at the top. Agriya. Hiranyagarbha samavartata agre bhutasya jata patre He was Agriya. Because he was at the Agra. At the top. Ha, then Prathama, who is the first? He should be the first. Hiranyagarbha must be the first. No. Rudra is the first. How? Prathamaha, okay. Hiranyagarbha was born. He was the first creature. Try to accept it. But before Hiranyagarbha, who was there? To create him. He is the first. He is the Rudra. So, o Rudra, you are the Agriya and you are the first. You are the first. You are the first in first. Even before the Hiranyagarbha are the other deities who are thought to be the first deities or the first creatures. They also have a beginning. They also have a deity before their birth. He is the actually first deity. That deity is our Rudra. Namo Agriyayacha Prathamayacha Urdra, I salute you because you are the Prathama. The first of all, the first. The next mantra Namo Ashavecha Jirayacha Ashavecha Jirayacha Urdra, I salute you. 
आशवे अशु अश्नोति व्याप्नोति सर्वत्रे ते आशुफु तस्मै रुद्राय आशवे नमः ओ रुद्र यू आर आशु आशु मींस स्प्रेडिंग एवरीवेयर यू कैन स्प्रेड एनीवेयर अशु व्याप्त व्याप्त You can spread anywhere, from anywhere. You can spread from anywhere to anywhere. That's why you are Ashu. Ashave cha, I salute you. Ajira yacha. Ajira means one who can go anywhere from anywhere. From land to water, from water to sky, from sky to land, from east to west, west to north, in any direction, anywhere, whose movement cannot be stopped, whose movement cannot be controlled by anybody. is called ajira ajira yacha he is expert in moving he can move from anywhere to anywhere the next mantra nama shigriya yacha shibhya yacha shigriya means uh the swiftly flowing waters Ah, rivers. They flow very fast. She grew up. She grew up means fast. Is very fast. Before you think anything, he will have done all those things. What you have planned, you will be planning for something. but in front of him you are very late because he is very fast and you ha- he has already implemented your plans shigriya cha also the uh, rapidly moving waters swift flowing waters the rivers are also called shigriya shibhyayata shibhya means uh, the underlying deity of the waters moving very fast underlying deity suppose shigriya is a, a river the shibhya is like tsunami It is much bigger than Shigriya, the river. Now, the Shigriya yacha, Shibhya yacha. He stays at the top of that flow of the waters and takes them and draws them and draws the waters along with him. Actually. Shibhya is the pointing deity of a tsunami, who leads the entire uh, uh, entire water kingdom. Shibhya cha, nama urmya cha, vasvanya cha. Next mantra. Urmya cha. Urmi means the waves. Urdra, you are in the form of the waters, the shape of which is a wave. I salute you. Means the waters in the oceans. See different kinds of waters. The rivers. 
the tsunamis, and now the oceans, the seas. Namu urmiya cha urmi means the well. In German, we call it well, or the wave, taranga. Namu urmiya cha avasvanya cha. Avasvanya means the silent water. the stationary water the stagnant water in the wells or in tanks the water doesn't make any noise avasvanya swana means the sound avasvana means without sound the waters without sound urdra you are the same you are as the soundless water i salute you nama urmyaya cha vasvanyaya cha the last mantra is nama srotasyaya cha dvipyaya cha nama srotasyaya cha srotas means the swiftly moving waters are uh, flowing down the mountains down the hills we call it brook cantus brooks they are called srotas you are in the form of brooks or cantus a swiftly moving waters they come all of sudden and wash away everything the rapid flood which instantly comes and devastates everything namasrotasyaya cha dvipyaya cha urdra you are in the shape of dvipa or island or continent i salute you dvipa means not a not just an island dvipa dvipa where the water gets water flows and the flow of water gets bifurcated becomes two and the land in between these two is called dvipa dvipa the land between two flowing two, two two flowing waters two moving waters is called dvipa dvipyaya cha you live in the dvipa urdra you live in the dvipa and you are nothing but the dvip the island or the continent you may take it in puranas we hear that sapta dvipa vasundhara vasundhara means the earth the earth is divided in seven continents thus the puranas padma purana and other puranas say sapta dvipa vasundara there are seven continents what are the seven uh, while uttering the sankalpa we utter jambu dvipa jambu dvipe bharata urshe bharata the land where we can we live in is called jambu dvipa jambu is a kind of uh, uh, a kind of fruit jambu dvipa in english we call it rose apple such trees are seen that those trees are seen here that's why it is called jambu dvipa the other one is the next one is shalmali dvipa shalmali is also a tree it is a silk thread 
ट्री सिल्क काटन ट्री शालमल द्वीप देन क्रौंच द्वीप क्रौंच क्रौंच इज ए बर्ड विच इज कॉल्ड खरलू and those birds are seen there that's why it is called crouncha dwip ha huh. there is another meaning crouncha means a mountain crouncha crouncha karana kumara or subramanya uh, shot an arrow towards the mountain and the arrow made the entire mountain into two pieces crouncha is a parvata a mountain or even a pakshi these are seen there that's why it is called crouncha crouncha dwipa then pushkara dwipa pushkara dwipa means lotus where the lotus a, a special kind of lotus pushkara golden lotus they are seen there they are naturally seen there we may see them here also but not naturally you may also see here crouncha but not naturally naturally we have here only the trees of jambu or uh, rose apple then there is the continent of plaksha plaksha is also a tree a huge tree like people tree ashwatha plaksha plaksha is a tree it is uh, it belongs to the ficus family and then the next one is darbha kushadweepa full of darbha the sacred grass and the last one is shakadweepa where abundantly the vegetables are grown shakadweepa leafy vegetables especially that is called shakadweepa jambu dweepa shalmali dweepa krounch dweepa pushkar dweepa plaksha dweepa kusha dweepa and shakadweepa these are the seven continents we come across in the upanishads and especially in puranas the the how the continents were born in vishnu purana there is and also in devi bhagavata there is a long description of the arrangement of all the dvipas once there was a, a king named swayambhuva manu he has two sons swayambhuva manu has two sons priyavrata is the first son he he ruled the earth for 11 arbuda years if we equate it will be 100 million years the present measure of times one day priyavrata saw the sun moving on the sky he was in in the eastern part of the earth so then suddenly an idea arose in his mind see the entire earth is my kingdom all the people are my citizens 
while some are enjoying the shrine of the sun, the others are left in darkness. I want to help them. There should not be darkness. So he got a chariot prepared, studded with such diamonds that they, they glitter, they shine like the sun. He boarded on the chariot and moved here and there on the earth. The wheels of the chariot, they made the furrows on the earth. The marks are like lines on the earth. The king moved in his chariot for seven times on the earth. Each time, the chariot made its marks on the earth. Or rather, the wheels of the chariot have created some furrows. Thus, there are seven furrows on the earth. From each furrow or each line of mark, different liquids have oozed out of the earth, came out of the earth. When he moved first time, then the salt water came out. That is the Jambudvip. So Jambudvipa is surrounded by salt water sea. When he moved second time, the juice of sugar cane came out. The Plakshadvipa is surrounded by sugar cane juice sea ocean. The Shalmalidvipa, the third time when he, he moved and the chariot wheels created a furrow, from the furrow came out liquor. The Shalmalidvipa is surrounded by liquor. When Priyavrata moved in his chariot for the fourth time, then from the furrows, Ghee came out. Kushadvipa is surrounded by Ghee, ocean. For the fifth time, when the king moved, the chariot normally created, usually created the furrows, and from the furrows, the curd oozed out. Curd, C U R D, curd oozed out. And Crown Chadvipa is surrounded by the sea of curd and when the sixth time the chariot moved the milk oozed out came out from the furrows and shakadvipa the continent of vegetables was surrounded by the milky ocean When he moved for the seventh time, the furrows have given way to pure water. Pure water emerged out. And this pure water sea surrounds the continent of Pushkara, Pushkara Dvipa. In fact, the Vishnu Purana and uh, Matsya Purana and some other Puranas also, Devi Bhagata especially, they give us a description about the continents, arrangement of the continents on the earth. The Jambu Dvipa is in the center point. The other six continents, they surround this Jambu Dvipa. This is called the, the nozzle of the 
നാവൽ ഓഫ് ദി അർത്ത് നാവൽ ഓഫ് ദി അർത്ത് ബിക്കോസ് ദി മൗണ്ടൻ മേരു സ്റ്റേസ് അറ്റ് ദി സെൻട്രൽ പോയിന്റ് ഓഫ് ജമ്പൂ ദ്വീപ് ആൻഡ് ജമ്പൂ ദ്വീപ് ഈസ് അറ്റ് ദി സെൻട്രൽ പോയിന്റ് ഓഫ് ദി അർത്ത് that is how the continents are born they are seven in number our rudra is in all the seven continents nama dvipyaya cha dvipyaya cha means dvipe bhavah dvipya one who lives on the dvipas and who controls the dvipas is called dvipyaya cha urdra i salute you in the form of dvipa or in the form of the king of the dvipas or the continents thus you are the master of the entire earth entire creation okay friends that's all for this episode we will meet in the next episode thank you namaste om shri sai ram loving pranams at the lotus feet of our dear lord sai on behalf of all the participants and on behalf of sri satyasai samyukta shruti shreni of sri satyasai seva organization india i express our sincere and heartfelt gratitude to professor dr sudarshan sharma garu for his excellent lecture on the inner significance and padartha explanation to the fifth anuvaka of sri rudra dhyaya with the kind permission of professor sharma garu i will provide a brief summary of his wonderful lecture the fifth anuvaka consists of 15 namaha aadi mantra the first two mantras namo bhavaya cha rudraya cha reminds us that sri rudra is the very source of the entire creation and he pervades all of it he is both the cause and the remedy for all forms of dukkha or agony the second mantra namah sarvaya cha pashupataye cha tells us that rudra is verily the layadhipati into whom the entire universe is dissolved and he is the controller of such a process he is he is the one who has the power to tie and also free the pashu who here professor sarmagaru elaborated to us on the word pashu who and also related the story from mahabharata on pashupatastra used by arjuna to kill jayadratha 
and also to free his father kshatra vridha or vridha kshatra from the bondage of his boon given to his son jayadratha thus sarmagaru attempted to drive home the meaning and the significance behind the power to tie and also to free the pashu this power is verily sri rudra the third mantra namo nilagrivaya cha shiti kanthaya cha reminds us on the infinite kindness and love of sri rudra who consumed poison to save his devotees during the samudra manthan episode rudra is both black throated due to the poison consumption and white throated due to bhasma dharana here professor sarmagaru related shiti kantha with spatika linga that is the pure and transparent form of rudra in the form of spatika and also told us on the importance of rudra bisheka to save the mankind from the planetary hostilities in the fourth mantra the contrasting form of sri rudra as kapardinah and vyukta keshaya is very nicely explained while talking about kapardinah one with locked and curly hair sri sadmagaru took us to the episode of daksha yagna vinashana emergence of virabhadra from the headlock of sri rudra to destroy all the evil tendencies in fact the locked hair of sri rudra kapardinah denotes the that all the evil tendencies are tied up and are under his control vyukta kesha tells us that shri rudra has no hair which goes on to explain that he is free from all bondages the omnipresence and omnipotence of shri rudra is again saluted in the fifth mantra namas sahasraakshaya cha shatadhanvane cha here the episode of tripura sura samhara is briefly recalled by professor sarmagaru to drive home the inner significance of shatadhanvane professor sarmagaru told us that the sixth and seventh mantras should be considered together as they tell us that shri rudra is verily the creator the sustainer and the destroyer brahma vishnu and maheshwara and he is indeed above the trinity shri rudra is above the trinity the eighth mantra namo hrasvaya cha vamanaya cha 
salutes the miniature form of Lord Rudra with befitting miniature organs and the Vamana form with the disproportionately sized organs. That Rudra is present in every being. Rudra is omnipresent and he is the indweller of every being he is again brought out through these salutations, through this eighth mantra, the Rudra is saluted in his varied forms. The ninth mantra elaborates on the Brihat nature, that is the form which cannot be confined to any place or time or shape of and that Brihat nature is verily Sri Rudra. It also salutes the boon showering nature, Bhola Shankara nature, in the form of Varshiyaha. He showers boons on all the devotees. And this aspect of Sri Rudra is saluted in ninth mantra. The tenth mantra. Namo Vruddhayata Samvruddha Necha praises Sri Rudra as the most ancient one and as Jnana Vruddhaha. He all, it also reminds us that he is worshipped by one and all in the entire universe. The entire creation worships Sri Rudra and is revered by one and all. While explaining the meaning of the 11th mantra, Namo Prathama Yacha Agriya Yacha, Sri Sharmagaru not only told us that Sri Rudra is at the top and is always the first, first among the first. While explaining the Agriya Yaha, he reminded us that Sri Rudra is both Hiranya Garbaha, the very first creature, and also the creator of such Hiranya Garbaha. Thereby, he explained to us the Anadi Tattva of Sri Rudra. The twelfth mantra salutes the omnipresence of Sri Rudra and his ability to move from anywhere to anywhere in no time. Sri Rudra is the energy as found in the force in the fast flowing river and it is the inherent power behind such a fast flowing river. It, uh, as it, it is saluted in the 13th mantra, Namah Shigriyaicha Shibhyaicha, both the fast flowing river and the energy behind it, both are Rudra and that power of Rudra, Rudra in that form is saluted. The power of Rudra in the energetic roaring waves in ocean and in the silence of still, stagnant, soundless water pool is again Rudra and that form of Rudra both as the energetic roaring waves and in silent, sound, stagnant water is saluted in the 14th mantra, Nama Urmiyayacha Vasvanyayacha. In the 15th mantra, Namasrotasyaicha Dvipyayacha. The power of Shurudra in the form of gushing and devastating mountain brooks and the energy of bifurcating water leading to island formation is again saluted. That Rudra is verily the entire creation is again reflected in this 15th Anuvaka. In the context of explaining to us 
on Vipyayacha. Sri Sarmagaru explained to us on how this earth is Sapta Dvipa Vasundhara. That is, it consists of seven continents. The earth made up of seven continents. These seven islands are, as explained by Sri Sarmagaru, are Jambu Dvipa, which is surrounded by salt water. Prakshat Dvipa, which is surrounded by sugarcane juice. Shal Malika Dvipa, which is surrounded by liquor. Kushat Dvipa, which is surrounded by ghee. Kraunchat Dvipa, which is surrounded by curd. Shakat Dvipa, which is surrounded by milk. And Pushkara Dvipa, which is surrounded by pure water. Here, Professor Sri Sharmagaru ended his talk by taking us to the episode from Vishnu Purana and Devi Bhagavata on the formation of these Sapta Dvipas through the story of the journey taken by Priyavrata, the first son of Vayambhu Manu, on his chariot across the entire earth for the benevolence and the joy and the happiness of all its subjects across the earth. Thus, Professor Sharmagaru have provided us the padartha and the inner significance of the end, fifth Anuvaka of Sri Rudra Dhyaya. I once again offer our heartfelt gratitude to Professor Dr. Sarmagaru for his wonderful lecture filled with inner significance which was conveyed to us through simple stories and episodes. I pray to Bhagawan to shower Professor Sharmagaru and his family all the blessings and the grace so that they will continue to work for a good cause and Vedo Dharana. Jai Sai Ram. Om Jai Jagadish Hari Swami Sathya Sai Hari Bhakt Jana Samrakshaka Bhakt Jana Samrakshaka Bhati Maheshwara Om Jai Jagadish Hari Shashi Vadana Shri Dara
जी की 